G'day. Welcome to worship today. As we gather in this way, hear the words of the psalmist from Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we calm in worship of you, the one who quenches a dry soul who provides for our needs, who is worthy of being praised purely on who you are, deserves honour for all you have done. We gather with intent this day, at this time, to listen for you, to honour you, to seek your face. O oh God, our God, we seek you. Reveal yourself to us, we pray. Send forth your spirit afresh that we might be bathed in the beauty of your love and renewed. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. When I grew up, there was a story that I know as, as Chicken Little, a story about the sky falling. Perhaps you know it as well. The best telling of this story I've ever seen was when I, I told it in New Guinea, and I, I had to change it from an apple to a coconut, and I didn't think about the, the size of a coconut and the weight of a coconut 
collecting a chicken. And the locals thought it was hilarious. A story that goes something like this. One day there was a chicken minding its own business. And an apple fell from the tree and hit it. And without examining the situation or thinking about the context, the chicken started running around screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And as said chicken ran through the yard, it started bumping into other farm animals and screaming at them, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And in its speed and energy and panic, it swept up a whole crowd believing that the sky was indeed falling. But all that had happened was an apple, an act of nature falling from the tree. Now you can understand why perhaps that might be interpreted a little differently in a culture where people do get killed by falling coconuts. But the imagery is the same. The panic, the busyness, the noise generated by the chicken didn't allow space for a purposeful, thoughtful reflection on what really might be happening. And that's the point of rumour. That's the point of fear. To create no space for us to respond well. And whenever we click and share on our devices without researching and examining, we add to the pandemonium. We add to the clutter. There is a challenge. Whether it be in the sharing of gossip or the passing on of clickbait on a, t on a computer screen. We have a responsibility to be bearers and sharers of the truth. Not the truth that we want. Not the truth that other people tell us, but the empirical truth of God. And that requires us, as the, the commandment says, not to be bearers of false witness. So for a moment, think about how busy the space is around you, how full of noise it is, generated by others. Politicians bantering, media sensationalism, local town gossip, the own voices in our heads. And then I invite you, to stop, to look to God, and to be still in the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, for many of us, we get caught up in the busyness and the noise of our times. We lose sight of you and we lose sight of the truth. We get so wrapped up in our own context. Lord, we're sorry. We're sorry that we have not been bearers of the truth, that we have been complicit in the bearing of false witness, that we have burdened others with the busyness and the noise of our world that is not of you. We're sorry that we have been caught up in the farmyard hysteria generated by a chicken. Lord, forgive us. Enable us by your grace to focus on you. To know 
through your spirit, your peace. That we might confront the hurts and the struggles of our world with justice and mercy. Lord, restored by your love and forgiveness, we pray for our world. We recognize with gratitude all that you have done. And we look to the pain that is around us. In our homes, in our families, in our church and in our community. To the ends of the earth. We hear wars and rumours of wars, fears of wars. And as we consume our media, we see the brutal reality of wars. We pray for all those who have been affected by the choice of violence. We pray for the women and the children, the old and the young. With nowhere to run, being killed in their homes and their schools, their villages and their streets. Lord, we pray for those who have found a way to run and are now living on the edge, reliant on the generosity of others, cold and hungry. We pray for them. Lord, we pray for those who have decided to resist, to stand up and say, this is wrong. We pray for courage. And we pray for all those who have chosen the path of violence. We pray for peace. Peace in their own hearts. Peace between combatants. Peace for our world. Lord, we pray for those who are battling health issues at this time, be it sicknesses of the body, and struggles of the emotions and the mind. Whatever the context, Lord, we look to you for healing, for restoration, for renewal, for new life. So we claim the power of the name of the risen Jesus. Come. Come and pour your healing upon our relationships, upon our bodies, and upon the whole earth, we pray. To your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing again with each other.
reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Luke, chapter 13. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those eighteen who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. We have from Luke's Gospel, a challenging reading, a reading about repentance, about new life, about suffering, and about giving space for something to grow. The reading starts with a conversation about punishment, grounded in the old school of thinking, one that we hold on to today, even though it is contrary to Scripture. That those who have sinned will be punished and those who have sinned more will be punished more. And if you see what looks like a punishment from God, then that means that there has been sin. For we all know we've sinned, but we're very good at grading these things. Go, oh, that was, that was something nothing. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, they're going to have it bad. They'll be all right. But the reality is, the deep scriptural teaching on sin is that sin is sin. There is no depth. Just as there is no portionality about the grace that is offered, the forgiveness that is ours in Christ Jesus. Jesus, very simply, is saying, wherever you are, whatever your past, whatever your context and present now, repent and know the saving grace, the love of God. And then he tells a parable. A parable about a tree that has been there for a while and just doesn't seem to be doing the right thing. And there is a conversation about getting rid of said tree because it's not productive, it's not bearing fruit, it's not being what it was planted to be. And there's a shortness about the approach of the owner. Cut it down. Get rid of it. Burn it. It's not worth it. And I suspect many of us have known that experience either personally or in the world around us where someone has written another off and gone, ah, they're not worth it. And I suspect that for many of us, we have also known contexts where loving, caring individuals have persevered and something beautiful has happened in another's life. Friends, 
hear the word in this story for us today. Create space. Be like the gardener. Create space for things to grow. Do the work that nurtures, that cultivates. We need that because our world is so full of stuff that poisons, so full of stuff that chokes out. The gardens of our lives for many of us are so full of weeds, so full of stuff that nothing's thriving. You ever done that? My fish tank at home at the moment desperately needs me to go in and, and do some looking after because I can't find the fish. They're there. They, they appear when I feed them. But the rest of the time, there is so much weed in my fish tank at the moment that the fish get lost. For them, they need space to swim. Those particular fish need open space. And I need to get in there and, and trim it back and cut it back so the plants are there to do what the plants are there to do and the space is there for the fish to be who the fish have created to be. Friends, I believe that is true in our world. We need to create space for life, for imagination and creativity, for rest and love and listening and service. Space for the things of the kingdom of heaven to grow. Now, I'm no international policy genius. But I know in the schoolyard, when one person's calling names to another person and that person responds with calling names back, there is very little space for a new narrative to appear. Unless someone comes along and creates it. Not by taking sides and putting others down, but by loving, by standing up against injustice. Friends, there are many things that are very complicated, much history that impacts and influences the way we act. But somewhere, somewhere we need people saying, stop. We need space for things to grow. And I know that sounds simplistic in the current context of international politics. Perhaps it needs to start with us. Us creating the space in our own lives and in our own relationships for the things of God to grow. Space to read the scriptures with the intent of hearing. Not as a comprehension exercise, but as an insight into the person of God. Space to allow others to grow. To bloom. Space for the Spirit of God to work. The vision of this passage is of Jesus wanting to nurture us, that we would bloom, that we would be fruitful in the way we were designed to be. Are we open to that? Are we willing for that? Friends, the choice is ours to embody and caught, get caught up in the chaos and the busyness of our world. 
or to be space makers. Space for people to discover the beauty of who God is. Let's pray. Loving Father God, when we are stressed, when we are busy, when we are frightened, we tend to react without thinking. We get caught up in the moment. We become judgmental of others and of ourselves. We defend without reason. We condemn without evidence. Lord, help us as we seek to be a people that creates space, the space for peace to happen. The peace that turns on its head our normal way of operating. The peace that gives space for good decisions, honourable decisions, just and merciful decisions. The space that gives room for compassionate responses. and sacrificial living. Lord, God who created all things, Lord, Jesus who gives to us life and life in you, Lord, Spirit of the living God, Lead us this day, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Took a walk outside of my walking Stepped inside another shoe Walked the dusty borders between us Paths I'd never chosen to choose How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Oh God, how then shall I live? Heard a sound outside of my listening Felt the living hum of the ground Waited on the voice of the Spirit Singing with its new old sound How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Oh God, how then shall I live? Saw the world outside of my looking Gazed upon the eyes of its soul Held the hopes and fears of tomorrow Found the pieces making the whole How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? Took a step outside of my walking Found within a beat that we share Walked with you the length of a lifetime And made of life a living prayer How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live? How then shall I live?
So as we go this day, may we not be caught up in the spinning treadmill of our world. May we be deliberate, discerning. May we be the face of the coming of the kingdom of God. The space makers in a busy world. May we be the nurturers, the gardeners, that others might bloom as they were created to, as Christ died that they might be, and as the Spirit works every day for each of us to be. Lord, lead us all in Jesus' name. Amen.